Good morning, traders. Welcome to the Privateer FX week ahead video. Hope everyone had a nice weekend and uh, get some of your holiday shopping done. Just don't go to any malls. Amazon.com is the best way to go. I learned my lesson yesterday. <coughs> Anyhow, uh, rather quiet weekend uh, as far as news events go. Excuse me. Um, I was just looking through Bloomberg's most read stories and, and top news, and there's really nothing that jumps out. Now, I'm doing this video a bit earlier today before the U.S. equity futures markets open, um, so we could, there could be some things that come out in the next few hours, but we are about three hours away from that open. Um, but I just wanted to get get, th get through the charts, and this video might be a little bit uh, shorter than last week's. I'm planning on doing a, a midweek video, which is going to be, uh, which will cover, we'll go over some of the yearly charts, um, which, you know, as we approach year end, it's uh, very important to know what the yearly charts look like and where they open, what the highs and lows were, and you know where they're potentially closing. And I'll do another update of the yearly charts. Um, you know, we, probably the probably the last day of the trading year on the uh, December thirty first. So why don't we get right to it here? A um, couple of surprises that came out last week um, were some fairly weak economic data points, not not just out of, um, out of Europe, but um, China also had some, some weaker data. And, uh, you know, I know we had the European PMIs, which kind of sent the euro lower uh, late in the week. So why don't we get into that euro chart? I'll show you what I'm talking about. There's the Euro Daily. That was Friday, so that was after the weaker PMIs. Some of the unrest in, in France, you know, has been really catching the headlines, you know, more so than Italy these days. And uh, you can see here we've got this level here, 112.70, looks like kind of a, a pivot. If we start getting under 112.70, we should head lower. Um, Speaking of Euro, if, uh, if we look at the weekly chart, again, this is a, the weekly preview, um, and we'd like to look back at the price action from the previous week. Um, if you look at the weekly, uh, we had a bearish engulfing, we made a new high. We closed just below uh, the previous week's low, and we're also sitting right here on the... Um, the 200 week moving average, which comes in right around 113.09. Um, if I go back to the daily, we have now recorded, you can see the sideways chop, we've recorded 13 daily closes on the 113 handle. So this ultimately has to go one direction or another. I mean, looking at the weekly bar, the outside reversal bar, the, you know, the bearish engulfing bar. My guess is lower. You know, some of the fundamental backdrop with uh, global growth slowing, and um, um, the European data surprises. There, not only are they negative, but they have now eclipsed their five-day and their twenty-day um, average. So, you know, we, we did take a big hit um, last week. I know we've got. IFO coming up out of Germany. So, you know, we're starting to pay close attention to Germany as well. Um, you know, growth starts slowing there, then I think that's the Euro's in a bit of trouble. A lot of the analysts in their 2019 outlooks, which I really don't, I like, I like reading them, but it, I certainly am not going to ever trade off of their, you know, trade top 10 trades of the year. I think it's all a bunch of BS. And generally, they're stopped out. A lot of times, they're st they put it out in early December, and they're stopped out before the new year even starts. So it's, it's kind of a joke. 
Um, but anyhow, so yeah, 13, 13 daily closes on the, on this one thirteen handle. This is this can't continue. Um, we hop over to um, let me look at the dollar index quick. Um, this is a daily. You know, we've we've had this high high daily close here. Um, you know, just below this bar, high daily close was ninety seven forty six, and the highest daily close of the year was ninety seven sixty four. So the um, you know all this is starting to look. Although we do have a bit of a tail from Friday, but it's starting to look um, like the dollar index wants to to make a, a new high daily close of the year as we as we approach year end. And um, if we look at the you know the components, obviously euro is the big one, and then we can look at the British pound. 126.62 is the bull bear line for the sorry um, so this 126.62 is the bull bear line um, this was the old breakdown that we saw last week and we, you know we've tried to recover back above it on you know on the, some of these brexit headlines this, this currency is still impossible to trade um, but if we get, get a close back above this 126.62 on the dailies, then you know I'll start playing it from the long side. If not, then there's no reason we can't go down. Uh, there's a bunch of confluence of support down around 124, the figure, uh, which would be our target. Um, popping over to Aussie. Aussie, let's look at the weekly. Aussie weekly had a really ugly looking bar. It started off the week pretty strong and then just sold off. And we're, you know, we're back down to these lows. So for me, you know, this area right in here, kind of right where we're trading, 70, 71. Well, if we go to the, if we go to the daily, the daily 71.65 is a FIBO that um, it's been holding. You know, so we we violated it on Friday and then closed back above it. So this is this seems to be a pretty key level. And then under there. 71.10 we'll call it, and then the year's lows at 70.20. Um, so, oh, the other, yeah, we also closed below the 100-day on Friday, and we closed right on it on Thursday. So the 100-day is now been acting as resistance. Um, to the Antipodean counterparty, Kiwi, which has been stronger relative to the Australian dollar on this whole on this whole move up. Uh, the first FIBO, the third FIB and some lows come right here at 67, 60 area. Called 67, uh, 50, 60. Looks to be support. And then under there, we've got the half FIB at 67 the figure. We've got the 100-day uh, moving average down at 66, 70. And then here's the the, the other fibs. Um, dollar CAD. We haven't really been too involved in the in dollar CAD um, of late, but you know I'm watching this and we're pretty close to. I believe we made the highest weekly close of 2018 uh, last week. Yes, we did. Right here, 133.90, and you know pretty close to the highest daily close. So again, this is just. Broad dollar strength, the uh, oil's not helping this. Oil was down about 2% last week. Um, and, you know, that, that thing just can't, it's really struggling. Um, let's look over at dollar China, see where we are on the weekly. You know, we had some high weekly closes up here. Uh, well, that was last year, or even 2016, I guess. But if we, if we go here, the highest weekly close looks like six, Called 695, and we're trading about 690. Um, if we break, if we move down to the daily, the high daily close of 2018 was all the way up here at 697. So that that's the that's the area 697.50 on the on the daily closes. Um, 
I'm just taking notes of that. Hold on one second. So the high daily close is a key for 2018. If we get above there, then I, I would imagine that 7.00 breaks, which you know, if we do get broad dollar strength and you know, maybe some risk off in the equities, which we'll get to in a minute, um, I could see in this low liquid, you know, holiday type market trading um, environment, uh, things could get a little bit ugly there. Um, dollar yen, we had an inside week, and we're forming this wedge here. The 100-day we talked about last week is, this is a blue line, has held it for a long time. We've pierced it a few times, but have not been able to close below it. So dollar yen um, is pretty much stuck in this range until further notice. So above 114, or but now, as this trend line moves up, call it below 112. 40, 112.30 we'll call it because that's 100 a um, We'll be watching, to, you know, we'll be taking positions on either side of that. Uh, if we go to some of the risk barometers in the currency space, Aussie Yen. Um, Aussie Yen, we had that island top, which was the, you know, the, the G20 where we gapped higher, went straight down, kind of consolidating, trying to, trying to rally, then we had a really shocker of a day on on Friday and we're right back down to this 8125 and the 100 day moving average is is just below so if it is if it turns into some equity selling here during Asian open um, I I like seeing this you know down another 60 70 points uh, would get down to that two-thirds fib at 80 60 um, and, the, and those all lows is eight or, or 80 70 uh kiwi yen we have a break trade on our radar that we've had for a while and that now comes in at this low here which was uh 76.95 and we closed friday at just above 77 so this could be uh there could again on the risk off this could uh trigger some stops below here and uh, I got to clean up this chart because I got some old fibs and stuff but yeah that this level right here just just above it looks uh, looks interesting and I would imagine they'll there'll be could be some you know early early Asia margin activity where they're uh, liquidating some of the carry trades and the, the cross in trades if we get some equity selling. So why don't we jump into the equities here? Because um, they did not have a very good week, um, in particular on Friday. Let's see if I can pull this up. I'm just looking at the cash. Um, you know, the weekly chart looks like this. And we had the big outside reversal two weeks ago. Had a little bit of a rally early in the week, and then we closed down here. So, um, you know, it closed pretty much on the lows of the week, down to 26, 26 a figure. So, um, in the cash, the lowest daily close of the year, 2018, is this horizontal dash line at 2580. Um, so that's big. You know, we start seeing daily closes under 2580. They're going to take these things apart. Or I think we could. I, I know it sounds a little crazy because we only have a couple weeks left, but I think we could actually get down to the, to 2450, even 2400. Um, the 2017 close is here at 2673, so we're negative on the year. I'll show you something: um, equity returns uh, for all all the countries uh, in a minute, and. Uh, the lowest weekly close since March in the S&P is 2588. So put that down. So lowest daily close 2580. Lowest weekly close since March 2588. So you see there's like this big confluence. And uh, we closed on Friday at 2600. We also have the 100, what is that, the 100 week moving average comes in this week around 26.10, so closed right on the 100-week moving average. Um, let me write that down. 100-week MA, 
six ten for this coming week. Um, NASDAQ, the lowest daily close since the October sell-off has been uh, 65.20. You can see that right here. I have this dashed line, this horizontal. Um, that was back, uh, that was a few weeks ago after that big October sell-off. So we'll be watching this. We got pretty close last week. The low was 60. 535, I believe. Um, so, hold on, is that a weekly? That is a weekly. Let's go to the daily. Uh, here it is. So, yeah, 6520. It's the lowest daily close. So, that would be important. And that, that's the lowest daily close since um, earlier in the year. The NASDAQ. Let me pull up something off my Bloomberg just to show you. These are the year-to-date returns for global equity markets. Dow Jones, down 2.5%. S&P, 276. NASDAQ, barely up after the route that we saw on Friday. This is the Canadian stock market. The TSX is down 15%. 18% is the Mexican. And then the Bavespa in Brazil is down 3%. Now let's look at Europe, right down the boards, anywhere from 16%. I mean, Swiss is the best performing at down 9%. It's probably because the S&B has been propping up that market. Um, but, you know, bit, these are big losses, 16 to 20%, DAX being the worst. And then you have Asia. You have the Nikkei is down 6%. The Hang Seng is down 12 And China is down 26 And the ASX out of Australia is down 15%. So it's a sea of red. It, it's, it's good to look at this, again, as we approach year end. You've got one major market up on the year, and it is essentially a doji type year forming, which, well, what the hell? I may as well give you a sneak preview of our annual charts, um, which I'll be doing sometime this week. Let me see if I can get to it. A 12 month chart of the NASDAQ minis. Um, let's go to the cash index because. Trading view is looks a little goofier. It looks, you know, so it's up, it's up marginally um, on the year. I had the futures closing last year at 68. Oh no, the NDX. Man, I think this is something to the futures, but anyhow, the you know a, a Doji year would be extremely bearish for um, Nasdaq. Here's the S and P yearly chart. So we are, like I said earlier, down on down a bit on the year. Um, last year's close being 2673. Um, what else? Other markets. Oil was down about 2%. Um, Bitcoin, I read some stuff this weekend. We're approaching the one year anniversary on December 18th of the all time highs in Bitcoin. So we might as well pull that puppy up. Crypto. I haven't looked at this stuff in ages. Um, Let's get to it weekly. Um, so the weekly, that's the S&P. Let's get to Bitcoin. So here's our high last year in December uh, 2017. Here's our parabolic rise, the bubble bursts, and we are now down, um, I believe it's about 85% from the peak. So we're also sitting here right near the, I believe this is the 200 week moving average. I was reading something about that. We're really close to the 200 week moving average, which is like 31, 3180. Um, we're actually looking to buy this on the 18th. I th I'm hoping for one more little flush and then look for some sort of daily reversal pattern higher. And we're gonna buy some, uh, I'll probably buy some Ethereum, buy some Bitcoin. Um, and again, we're not day trading this. This is more of a buy and hold. But, um, you know, generally when these bubbles burst, if you look back at any of the charts from the late, from early 2000, uh, a lot of those tech names, the ones that did burst dropped about 80% from their all-time high. So it seems like it's decent value. Um, 
as far as a week ahead, we have, let me get my calendar. Um, we've got IFO coming out on got a couple RBA minutes uh, tomorrow night, New York time. And IFO coming out in Germany, which will be closely watched, um, especially with the German auto sector. Um, what else do we have of interest? UK CPI, probably not too important. We got Canadian CPI, the US, of the US we have the FOMC. Um, it's about 20, it's only about 21 basis points priced in for 2019. So that's not even one full hike and it was three, not too long ago. Uh, we are expecting a hike, 70% 70, 70 chance of a hike. Um, then we have the Bank of Japan on Wednesday night, my time. The Ricks Bank, which we'll be watching closely, we're expecting them not to hike this meeting um, after their week CPI. And at that point, they may not even be able to hike in February. So, because um, I, I think things seem to be slowing down there. And then the Bank of England, obviously doing nothing. U.S. deadline for government shutdown. Congress should extend the deadline via a continuing resolution. We will find out Friday. Um, after Canadian retail sales and U.S. durables and PC. Um, again, we're approaching that time of year. This is the last full week um, of 2018 because Christmas Day is the 25th. And um, we also have this Friday. Friday could be pretty interesting. We also have uh, triple witching, or sorry, quadruple witching. Um, so we got the Fed this week, then we got the quadruple witching on, on Friday, and we're expecting to see some decent uh, rebalances um, as many traders are pretty much wrapping up for the year. Um, I was reading something on uh, Twitter earlier that a lot of these equity managers are have just thrown in the towel. They've massively underperformed their benchmark. Um, you know, there's, there was an article on Bloomberg about more hedge funds shutting down. And, you know, I think a lot of the risk takers out there are getting the tap on the shoulder right now and just say, you know what, wrap it up. We're done for the year. p &L resets to zero January 1st, <clears throat> January 2nd, whenever they get back in their seats. And, uh, and just kind of write this one off because the returns across the board in, you know, the hedge fund space, the prop space, the equity long shorts, you name it, they've all massively underperformed. Um, so we'll be watching. Uh, we'll be watching closely. Uh, we're going to take a couple days off around the holidays, but I should have a video for you next week. No guarantees. I'll definitely do a, a midweek video and bring you up to speed on the yearly charts, and then we can revisit those um, after Christmas. And potentially next uh, Sunday afternoon, Monday morning Asia, depending on my uh, family commitments and everything with uh, the holidays approaching quickly. So good luck trading this week. Um, expecting kind of a quietish open. Um, but again, we're two and a half hours before the equity indices open in the U.S. and there could be a Trump tweet. There could be a news headline. So fasten your seatbelts and uh, good luck today. Good luck this week. You'll hear from us on the European Open. All the best. Cheers.